faculty position at Utah State University in the Department of Kinesiology and Health Sciences. This is a uh, full-time tenure-track uh, position, primary focus on teaching in the Parks and Recreation Program. As you know, our program specializes in the management and programming of recreation experiences with a focus on nonprofit and municipal recreation agencies. The program is currently an undergraduate program with our long-term vision of reintroducing uh, its graduate program status. So please welcome Juan. Well, thank you so much, committee, for having me here today so that I can uh, present my talk to you and that you're taking the time to have me over. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to start off with a brief introduction about myself. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm originally from Cape Town in South Africa, and I put up a picture of what that looks like. Uh, those of you that haven't been there before or haven't seen a picture of it, and this summarizes a lot of what I do in my free time. So what we can see here is the beauty of the mountains, the ocean, as well as a very metropolitan city all in one place. So in my spare time, and the way I use my time is I like to be in the ocean, I like to be in the mountains, and I like to do fun outdoor activities with my time. But I also appreciate a good, uh, a good nightlife scene where there's good food and good places to visit, especially considering I'm from a tourism background. This was a prime spot, seeing Cape Town as a very touristic spot. And so let's move into my education. So being from Cape Town, naturally for my master's, I studied at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. And there I did a master's in tourism and hospitality research. Uh, and after I complete, well, let's quickly go into my dissertation. So for my dissertation, I focused on sustainable tourism. And the title of my dissertation was The Effectiveness of Implementing Eco-Initiatives to Recycle Water and Food Waste selected Cape Town hotels. We're going to delve into that a little bit so you can see what I did. Uh, currently, so moving on from a master's currently, I'm a doctoral student here at the University of, or at the University of Utah, applying to Utah State. And my emphasis is in sustainable tourism, so I decided to carry on the trend that I started in my master's coming through uh, to where I'm completing my PhD right now. My expected graduation date would be in 2020, so in 2016, I decided to make the jump all the way on a 32-hour flight to come to the States to pursue my education. Uh, with today's presentation, I'm going to be jumping into my teaching philosophy, followed by my research interests, and then a little bit of the service that I've been doing as well. So as we go into teaching philosophy, the first thing that I'd like to highlight is my teaching experience. So um, I have about four years of experience in the tourism industry where I worked at the Westin Cape Town, it's a five-star hotel. I've worked in two other hotels as well as an internship. And so with that background, I moved into being a full-time instructor at the College of Cape Town. And this is where I worked for two years prior to coming to uh, Salt Lake City to pursue my higher education. I was an instructor in hospitality and catering. And what I did is I drew up a couple of photos to show you some of the teaching that I did. So these are, actually students that I taught, but this photo was taken after I left the, the college. Um, some of the courses that I taught at the College of Cape Town included management courses, they included uh, communication courses, as well as practical courses, because hospitality is such a practical industry. And these photos highlight some of the practical classes we did. So this was, uh, on every Friday we used to run uh, cafe, and I would teach the students how to set up for food and beverage operations. So we teach them how to set a table properly, we teach them how to serve food, and how to interact with clients. But we also did the back of house, which is the kitchen area over here, and you can see our lab, uh, laboratories, or labs, where we would teach them how to cook. So they would cook the food on one week, and the next week they would serve the food. And so they had a chance to learn these operations from the back of house and the front of house as well. So currently at the University of Utah, I'm a graduate teaching assistant, and the areas or the classes I've had the privilege of teaching have focused on recreation, leisure, tourism, and hospitality. It's encompassed all of those areas. Uh, with the recreation leisure classes, uh, the biggest class I've taught is called the Integrated Core, and 
incorporates four uh, primary courses for our undergrad students uh, that guides them through uh, recreation and leisure studies. I've also taught courses such as the Global Citizen, which focuses on global tourism trade, as well as a couple of online tourism and hospitality courses, such as the Introduction to Tourism and Hospitality, the Hospitality Supervision. And so my teaching is not only in person, uh, but I've also done a lot of online teaching. And what we can see as we move on to some of the courses I've taught for uh, the University of Utah is how I incorporate technology in the classroom. And so with one of the co this course specifically is called Leisure in Your Life, so it's an introductory course to leisure studies. And what I ask my students to incorporate technology is to not only use the theory that they were learning in the classroom, but to show me that they were implementing it in their daily lives as well. This course I taught in the summer, which was perfect because students had a lot of time in summer to be able to engage in outdoor activities. And one of my students submitted this photo, so mm -hmm. on a weekly basis, they had to submit a photo for me to show that they were taking the theory they were learning in, classroom, uh, in the classroom and applying it in their daily lives. And this was a weekly process until they completed the course. So with this specifically was close to the end of the course, close to the end of the semester. And so what we were focusing on was the theory of uh, social constructivism within the realm of critical theory. That's a lot of words and it's a lot of complex things, but basically what it means is we're looking at how you can change society, but you need to focus on the social aspects of what goes on in society to be able to create a positive change. And what she submitted was a hike that she did where she didn't know any of the people there, but she provided a quote from the readings, which is one thing that I asked them to do as well, to mention that within social constructivism, the nature of the social place is both the subject and the result of ongoing conversations of equal individuals. And that shows that they can only, or that they can not only learn theory, but they can apply it in their practical lives too. So with this introduction to my teaching experience, I'm gonna follow up with my teaching philosophy. So the first aspect, uh, or the principles that I include in my teaching philosophy, number one, is practical learning. And that feeds off of the hospitality industry where I got my primary training, uh, had a lot of work experience in that, and so what I learned over time was the importance of experiential learning. And so I'd like to incorporate, uh, incorporate that into my classes as well. And so what practical learning does is it takes classroom theory and it makes that into a real life experience. Some of the ways that I achieve that is through doing field trips. Uh, so with one of the uh, classes I've taught with Integrated Core, I had a group that focused on uh, tourism and hospitality. So I had the privilege of taking them out to Grand America, which is a hotel in Salt Lake City. We did a site inspection where they could see all the elements of what they were learning in a practical environment. The other things I like to do is have uh, ind industry professionals over as guest lecturers, as well as to do practical assignments like you saw with the previous Instagram uh, assignment that they had to do on a weekly basis for me. The second principle is I like to facilitate an interactive learning environment. Now, what this means is with the students that I teach, uh, they're going to be the future industry leaders. And that means that they're going to have a lot of problems that they need to solve, which comes up over time. So uh, as students and as uh, academics, we have to be pragmatic about the way we think about the industry. And I believe that the students are going to be encountering problems in 10 or 20 years from now that don't exist today. And one way that we can make sure that they can effectively address these problems is by having them uh, do creative problem solving in groups. So group work is something that I like to emphasize within my classes because it allows you to bounce off ideas and feed off the creativity of the students around you. And the third principle is I like to provide and receive feedback. So this is particularly important. It's something I've picked up over time through some of the service that I've uh, engaged in, where if you do an activity or an assignment, uh, it's not enough just to do the activity and receive a grade for it you have to debrief students as well to make sure that they learn the learning objectives and that those were effectively passed on. I also like to receive feedback to make sure that I can improve my classes. So what I do is I incorporate uh, the CTLE system into my classroom, so I'll have regular observations uh, so I can improve my syllabus. Uh, I'm also planning next semester to attend the CTLE uh, class that will teach me 
uh, classroom pedagogy and how to be a more effective teacher. From this, we're going to move on to my research interests. And I'll start with my master's, and from there, we'll move on to some of the more current research I'm doing. And with my master's research, I pulled out uh, an extract from the literature review that I did, which I felt informed the research that I do the best. So I'm going to go ahead and read this out to you, and then we're going to see how this has progressed and developed in my personal research today. So what it said, or what I found, was that the long-term success of healthy society depends on economic development to avoid poverty and contribute to social welfare. But, however, an economy that is entirely focused on growth and development, which at the same time damages the environment, will limit the capacity of the environment to provide to society. This we'll explore in a couple of slides. Right now, I'm going to tell you what I did with my research. So with my research, I investigated how we can implement eco-initiatives to recycle water and food waste. Uh, the two ways that I did this, number one, was with uh, water recycling. And so what we did is we saw how you can use rainwater uh, and harvest the rainwater so that you can uh, use that to substitute your water use. Because the thing that triggered this thought in my head was, the Westin Hotel that I was working for is a 400 room, a 400 plus room hotel. And that's one out of over 49 hotels in Cape Town. And each hotel loses a significant amount of water, so I wanted to see how we can address that problem. Second issue is there's a lot of waste that comes out of the hotels. Having had the opportunity to work in the food and beverage industry, I could see the amount of food that gets thrown away at the end of each service. So the second initiative that I looked at is how you can recycle food through something that's called vermicomposting, uh, basically means you're using earthworm farms to break down the organic waste, uh, and it produces you very fertile soil which you can use in your garden. What I found, so conclusively, we saw that hotels that were implementing these initiatives were able to reduce the waste that they were producing. So what's the significance of this research? Well, what I found was that I was investigating something that's called the triple bottom line. And the triple bottom line is when the tourism industry tries to be economically successful, but they also want to make sure that they're having a positive environmental and social impact at the same time. But one thing that I found in the recommendation section of my master's thesis was for these eco-initiatives to be successful and to be implemented, you can have all the technology in the world, you can have all the systems in place, the thing that drives it is a social investment. So you need to have the people who are making sure that these initiatives work, you need to make sure that they're buying into what you're, basically what you're providing as a, a sustainable operation. Then, some of the current research that I'm doing at the University of Utah is uh, having a look at this organization which is called uh, the World Travel and Tourism Council. And they provide awards each year to uh, tourism operators uh, in different categories that uh, offer sustainable solutions. So the one we were looking at specifically was uh, the conservation um, model that they were implementing. And the award that they received is called the Tourism for Tomorrow Award. We took the top three finalists to determine how over a 10-year period ranging from 2005 to 2015, uh, sustainable or conservation initiatives within tourism operators have evolved and if they have evolved over time. The process that we followed was thematic coding, and we used four categories. Conservation was a primary category. And you'll notice with the other uh, three categories that they're very closely linked to the triple bottom line. So we also looked at the economic benefits, as well as the social and cultural benefits. Once we had done our coding process, we collapsed the codes and developed a frequency table which looks like this. Now, the most interesting thing that I found out of the frequency table is, well, these are all the conservation initiatives that they were implementing, as well as the codes to describe what it was that they were implementing. You'll notice that out of the economic, social, and cultural benefits, there were plenty of codes coming up for the social aspects as well. Not only that, if you have a look at the frequency, it's the second highest right after conservation. So what we found out of this research, and 
what I'd like to bring your attention to as well, this will come up later in the presentation, is some of the things that are encapsulated within social benefits. So you'll have things like uh, education or construction projects, uh, or you'll have the availability of funds made available to scholars. Now what we found is that if you have uh, conservation projects, they're inherently linked to economic and social and cultural aspects as well. So for the one to thrive, you need the others to be involved in that as well. And going back to the social codes, we also realized that a very important thing on the social side is community capacity building. And the reason this was so interesting, again, just coming back to the frequency, is it had a 16% frequency within the social indicators, and it had a count of 6 out of 38. So what we know is that for conservation, the social aspect comes on very strong as well. So how does this inform my future doctoral research? Well, what I would like to look at on the completion of my uh, degree is how, um, or sorry, it's the social impacts of community-based tourism uh, on things like power structures and inequalities and community capacity building. And the reason I would like to do this is to determine if there's a positive social change that comes about through creating empowerment opportunities for community members. So to bring this a little bit together before I go into the methods, we know that within communities, there are positive social outcomes of tourism. We know that tourism provides education opportunities, provides economic opportunities, and provides opportunities for the development of the community. But what we like to know is, uh, how can, or sorry, what I'd like to know is, with those things, what actually results in those things happening within community? So within my methods, what we look at is small communities with a size of about 1,000 to 20,000 members. Uh, they need to have an existing tourism industry. Methods I'll employ is a comparative study. We utilize a mixed method approach. And I will primarily develop my measures for collecting this data uh, through using the Global Sustainable Tourism Council's destination criteria. Now, the reason that I use these criteria is that they're a collection of uh, sustainable criteria that exist with our industry already. So it's a comprehensive uh, collection of all these indicators that have been brought together into one um, criteria. Some of the procedures that I Think that I'll be using. So I'm not entirely at the, re at the data gathering process yet, but what I anticipate will be happening is I'll be identifying a list of key community contacts. Within these contacts, I'll be requesting a 30-minute interview. The interview questions will be developed according to the GSTC criteria. I'll then be using snowball sampling to make sure that I can reach a point of saturation where I've collected all the data that's possible and to make sure that the entire community feels included in the process. I'll also use surveys that I'll distribute through Qualtrics as interviews will only, could only be conducted with key community contacts. So there will be a few community members that are not part of the interview process. It, surveys will be sent out to ensure that they can also have a say in this process. Now within the GC, oh, GSTC destination criteria, I'd like to give you an example of what some of those criteria would look like. So I've drawn up this table, and out of the destination criteria that looks at socioeconomic indicators, these are some of the things that will come up. So you'll have a look at public participation, career opportunities, local community opinion, supporting local entrepreneurs, and tourism awareness and education. And so as I develop my research and look into uh, what kind of data to collect, these will guide the kind of questions that I'll be asking as well as the data that I'll be looking at. Now, the expected outcomes of uh, my final dissertation would be, as I've elaborated before, we know that there's positive social change through tourism. Uh, what I like to know is, what are the mechanisms that lead to this change? How can you, if you have two different communities, and one community has certain outcomes, for example, they have education initiatives, and your second community who has a tourism trade uh, lacks a certain outcome, then what creates this capacity building? What's the mechanism that leads to this capacity building within the community? And secondly, as I've uh, just briefly mentioned, if you have a look at the differences across communities, what are the 
uh, capacity building policies that are being implemented at the destination level that influence how these uh, positive social changes occur. Next, I'll be going into some of the service and leadership that I've been a part of. So currently, I'm on the board of directors for a nonprofit in Salt Lake City. It's called Stone of Hope Youth. Uh, my role, which uh, I can be honest, we were sitting in a coffee shop with the uh, founder of the, of the nonprofit, and we were thinking, what can we call you? And we just made this title, and it seemed very appropriate for the role that I have. So I'm the director of key relationships. What that means is I manage a very diverse portfolio of donors and grants for our company. So I'm responsible for making sure that we get all the money we need for our operations to be successful. What we do for Stone Oak Youth is we specialize in positive youth development for boys aged 11 to 14 in Stansbury Elementary School. Uh, Stansbury Elementary School is part of the Granite School District in Salt Lake City. Uh, it's a tier one ESL school, so the children that we work with, uh, we're trying to develop leadership skills uh, and to make sure that they can be successful in life in the future. Now, the reason why this is such an important uh, nonprofit that I work for and how it ties in with the research or the direction I'm taking in the future is that we're developing leaders of the future that will be coming into uh, the workforce and that will be taking forward uh, industries like the tourism industry. And we want to make sure that they're successful at them when they step into that role. Uh, they have all the leadership skills as well as the qualities that they need to be able to be successful. Then one of the things, uh, or on the conclusion of my slide, uh, one of the things that I feel uh, would be extremely uh, good to be a part of is that because the program is currently only, only an undergrad program, uh, Utah State University has expressed an interest to take this further and develop their master's and their PhD programs, or at least the graduate programs. Uh, and on a personal development level, I feel it would be um, very beneficial for myself to be able to learn how to be a part of curriculum development, and as well as to bring some of the expertise that I have to the table to assist in the development of the graduate programs at Utah State University. Are there any questions? Based on your presentation, it's pretty clear to me that your, your passion is travel, the tourism, and hospitality industry. And that's well and good, but at a really small, in a really small program like we have in Utah State, with only a, a few faculty members, um, one of the things we have to have are faculty members who, are, um, who welcome the opportunity to teach beyond their expertise or their specialized passion. Uh, part of that's ruled by accreditation. We have to jump through selective hoops to satisfy a national accreditation standard. I guess my, my question is how comfortable are you with having perhaps to teach things outside of your, your particular academic specialty or niche? Do you welcome those opportunities? Um, can you respond to that? Of course, and I think I certainly will. I think. Uh, the opportunities I've been given at the University of Utah to teach courses that are non-hospitality related but focus on recreation and leisure um, prepare me very well to be able to teach them. I think not only being able to teach the courses to undergrad students but taking recreation and leisure courses on the graduate level um, also gives me a lot of theoretical background to be able to build courses or to assist in curriculum development uh, and be able to teach that to students. Okay. As a faculty member at Utah State University, um, my question for you is, is are you going to be a happy, kind of following up this question, are you going to be happy at an institution who really has no focus on tourism and is in a very small rural area? So I think the area, there's no problem there. I've been to Logan a couple of times, so I'm familiar with, uh, with the geography of the area. Uh, I really do like it out there in terms of the natural of Logan the city. Uh, in terms of the academic content, content of what I specialize in, I think being able to bring that to the table and diversify the portfolio of the Parks and Recreation program uh, could be a benefit. Um, I think 
it's always good to be able to develop programs and include more expertise. Uh, but I also feel that I'm well-rounded enough where my master's focus on tourism and hospitality and my PhD currently focuses on recreation and leisure, it being a parks and recreation program that I'm in. So I feel like I would be a really well-balanced individual where I could bring both sides of the coin to the program. high impact educational practices that we're interested in developing in our field. It's a global experience for students. It's a really international person in the education. What are your thoughts on the value of that experience for undergraduate students and how we might cultivate additional relationships with our program? So being from a different background, it definitely brings different teaching philosophies and experiences. So the way that I would interact with students would perhaps be a little bit different from what they've experienced in the past, but I think in a very positive way. I think it will bring them a view of uh, how you can learn in a very different way from what they might have been used to in the past. Um, they would be exposed to some experiences I've had in the past and how uh, the industry, especially the recreation and leisure industry, looks across the pond or across the ocean. Uh, but I think they'd also be surprised at how many similarities there are. I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference between um, the experiences you'll have in a place like Cape Town versus you in Utah. Um, I think the fundamentals stay the same, but I think that uh, being able to expose them to different viewpoints and different philosophies would be where they would benefit a lot. Uh, I think in terms of collaboration, uh, that is welcome at every level, I think, by every academic institution. I think if you have uh, the opportunity to have guest speakers or to send students on a study abroad program, uh, that's always very positive for So there's, I think, definitely the opportunity for collaboration between universities or between continents. That sounds very exciting to me. It's something I haven't thought of before. Uh, I think that having had the past corporate experience and uh, experiences in hospitality where uh, my role within the Western was setting up itineraries and making bookings and making sure that people were staying on schedule, uh, that would be a strength that I could bring to the table to make sure that the planning and the logistics go very well. I think that uh, I have a good grasp of the African continent, uh, not just having stayed in South Africa, but being closer to Central Africa on a few trips myself. Uh, I understand the cultural nuances and differences and be able to navigate them. So I feel that being able to lead an international trip would be something that's very exciting. That I would definitely want to. 